It's 3.17 a.m. Somewhere over the Indian Ocean, a Boeing 777 slices through the night at 35,000 feet. Passengers are tucked into their blankets. The cabin is quiet. Lights dimmed. Meal service done. Not a sound except for the soft hum of the engines. But at the front of the aircraft, in a dark cockpit filled with blinking lights and glowing screens, two pilots are wide awake. One is sipping lukewarm coffee. The other is scanning the flight display. It's hour six of a 15-hour journey from Singapore to London. Outside, it's pitch black. Inside, they're focused, alert, attentive, and ready for anything. But how do they do it? How do pilots stay awake on flights that last longer than most people sleep in a day? This is the untold story of aviation's longest nights and the men and women who live them wide awake. Fatigue is not just feeling tired. In aviation medicine, it is defined as a measurable decline in cognitive and motor performance brought on by extended wakefulness, circadian misalignment, or poor quality sleep. The human brain is wired for a rhythmic cycle of light and dark, core body temperature, hormone production, reaction time, even mood all follow that 24-hour drumbeat. Put someone in a pressurized aluminum tube and push them through six time zones at midnight, and biology begins to rebel. Inside the cockpit, the first enemy is sleep pressure, the chemical weight that builds in our brains the longer we stay awake. It is driven by adenosine, a neurotransmitter that accumulates like sand in an hourglass. Caffeine blocks adenosine receptors temporarily, but the sand keeps falling. When the drug wears off, the pressure returns stronger. Next comes the circadian trough. Around 3 to 5 o'clock, core body temperature reaches its lowest point. Alertness drops, microsleeps become more likely, decision-making slows, and the risk of an error spikes. Four long-haul crews this trough can strike while they are halfway over an ocean with no diversion airport in range. So schedules are built to ensure at least one pilot is fresh while the other may be entering that biological valley. Complicating matters further is sleep inertia, the mental fog that lasts 5 to 30 minutes after waking. A pilot who rushes from the bunk to the flight deck must overcome impaired short-term memory and reduced situational awareness precisely when sharp thinking is required. Controlled rest procedures therefore mandate a buffer, wake-up alarms, bright cockpit lighting, and a briefing with the colleague who remained at the controls before any critical tasks resume. Research by NASA and IKO shows that even modest fatigue can mimic a blood alcohol content of 0.04%, enough to degrade reaction times by 25%. At severe levels, 24 hours without sleep, the impairment equals or exceeds legal intoxication. Yet long-haul crews routinely work rotation patterns that place them awake at times their physiology insists they should be asleep. Understanding these biological constraints is the foundation of every rule, rest policy, and cockpit ritual you'll see in the remaining acts. The science of fatigue is unforgiving. Pilots can't defeat it, so they learn to outmaneuver it, hour by hour, leg by leg, across the endless night sky. On a long-haul flight, Passengers may imagine that pilots stay seated at the controls for the entire 10, 12, or even 16-hour journey. But the truth is more structured and far more strategic. Behind the cockpit, often hidden behind an inconspicuous door or staircase, is one of the most critical safety features on an ultra-long flight, the crew rest compartment. These rest areas vary by aircraft type. On a Boeing 777 or Airbus A350, the compartment might consist of two or more lie-flat bunks located above the main cabin, just behind the cockpit. On older aircraft, it might be a curtained-off section in business class or a rear galley jump seat. Regardless of the setup, the principle is the same. Give each pilot protected time away from the flight deck to rest, recover, and reset. The Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, ESA, and ICAO have strict requirements for rest periods depending on flight duration number of pilots, and time of day. Most long-haul flights over 8 to 10 hours require augmented crew, meaning there are three or four pilots on board, a captain, a first officer, and one or two relief pilots. This allows for a rotating system where at least one pilot is always off duty, usually in a staggered pattern of rest blocks lasting three to six hours. But here's the catch. Resting at 2 p.m. body clock time when your circadian rhythm is wired for activity isn't easy. 
Many pilots develop their own pre-flight routines to bank sleep, going to bed early the night before or taking a controlled nap at the airport crew lounge prior to departure. Others swear by sleep hygiene tactics in the bunk, noise-canceling headphones, eye masks, melatonin supplements, and avoiding caffeine in the hours before their rest period. Even inside the bunk, the environment matters. The lighting is dim, the airflow is controlled, and interruptions are minimized. Flight attendants and other crew are trained not to disturb pilots unless necessary. For pilots, the ability to get real, deep sleep during these short windows can make the difference between feeling sharp or dangerously dulled hours later over the Atlantic or Pacific. At the heart of this system is trust and discipline. Pilots must stick to their rotation schedules with military precision. They rely on each other to be mentally sharp and physically rested when it's their turn at the controls. And they all know that every hour of rest they get today is fuel for the decisions, workload, and weather challenges they may face tomorrow, sometimes in the most remote parts of the sky. In essence, crew rest isn't a break, it's a performance strategy. Most ultra-long-haul flights have more than just two pilots. Enter the relief crew. Extra pilots brought aboard to take turns flying the plane so no one is at the controls for the full flight duration. On a 15-hour flight, pilots might work in four to six hour shifts, giving each other time to rest. Where do they rest? Inside the aircraft, tucked away above the passenger cabin or behind the cockpit, are hidden compartments known as crew rest areas. These are private, quiet spaces with bunks, lights, temperature controls, even noise insulation. They're small, but they're sacred. During off-duty periods, pilots retreat here to nap, sometimes deep, sometimes light, always with one goal, to recharge and return sharp. This system of rotation ensures that when one pilot is flying, the other is not just present, they're alert, rested, and ready to take over. But sleeping alone isn't enough. Staying awake during a long-haul flight requires tactical stimulation. Caffeine, for instance, is a powerful tool, but only when used right. Pilots don't just drink coffee for the sake of it. They time their intake to avoid crashes later in the flight. A cup too early, and alertness fades mid-shift. Too late, and sleep becomes impossible during rest periods. Then there's food. Heavy meals can trigger drowsiness. Light, protein-rich snacks help maintain energy. Many pilots bring their own food on board. Not because airline meals aren't good enough but because the right nutrition keeps the brain firing at full capacity. And finally, movement. Every few hours, pilots get up. They stretch, walk to the cabin, do light exercises in the galley. This keeps circulation going and the mind alert. Small habits, big impact. Perhaps the most powerful weapon against fatigue is psychological. Pilots are trained to respect their mental limits and to never pretend they're okay when they're not. In the cockpit, there's a culture of constant cross-checking, briefings, verbal confirmations, all designed to keep both pilots mentally engaged. Silence is rare. Communication is constant. Pilots are encouraged to speak up if they feel sleepy, to call for a break, to admit when they're not at 100%. There's no room for ego here. The cockpit is a partnership, not a performance. This environment of shared responsibility keeps both minds sharp. If one fades, the other steps in. No one is alone. And if both pilots are ever incapacitated, unlikely, but procedures exist. Relief pilots, alert cabin crew, and even automation systems stand by. Because in aviation, every scenario is accounted for. In the high-stakes world of long-haul aviation, pilots aren't flying solo against fatigue. Modern technology has evolved into a kind of invisible co-pilot, quietly, relentlessly, and precisely supporting the crew from takeoff to touchdown. The aircraft themselves are marvels of automation. Modern long-haul jets like the Boeing 787 Dreamliner or Airbus A350 are built with fly-by-wire systems, reducing the need for constant manual input. Flight management systems, FMS, handle navigation, fuel optimization, and engine performance with microscopic precision. Once airborne, pilots can program their route altitudes, speeds, and step climbs, leaving the autopilot to follow it with more consistency than any human hand. But automation isn't about letting go. It's about shifting cognitive load. Rather than physically flying the plane for 15 hours straight, pilots become managers of systems, cross-checking data, monitoring instruments, 
coordinating with air traffic control, and staying mentally engaged without burning out. Advanced warning systems like TAS, Traffic Collision Avoidance System, EGPWS, Enhanced Ground Proximity Warning System, and Weather Radar give pilots an expanded, predictive view of their environment. Essential when flying over dark oceans or polar routes where diversion options are few and far between. These tools reduce surprise, and in aviation, fewer surprises mean safer flights. In the cockpit, electronic flight bags, YFBs, have replaced paper charts and manuals. These tablets give instant access to real-time weather maps, approach charts, NOTAMs, and fuel calculations. Instead of flipping through binders, pilots can swipe and tap their way to any piece of information, keeping situational awareness high and workload low. And behind the scenes, data-driven fatigue management systems are becoming increasingly common. Airlines now use biomathematical models to predict fatigue risk based on pilot schedules, circadian rhythms, and prior rest history. Some airlines even integrate this data into rostering software, ensuring that high-risk pairings are flagged and avoided before the crew even boards the plane. There are also alertness monitoring systems being tested, eye-tracking cameras, reaction time tests, even cockpit lighting that adapts to maintain circadian alignment. These are early-stage technologies but they signal a future where fatigue management may be part of the airplane's own software architecture. Still, technology isn't a substitute for human judgment, it's a partner. Pilots are trained to fly without it, in case of system failure. But when used wisely, these tools help smooth out the edges of long-haul duty, buying pilots the most precious commodity of all, mental clarity at 39,000 feet. In the end, the co-pilot isn't just the person sitting next to you. It's the code, the circuits, and the silent systems that never blink, allowing pilots to stay focused, stay alert, and stay safe. Long-haul flights are marvels of modern engineering. They span oceans, cross time zones, and connect the world. But at the heart of every one of them are a few determined individuals, wide awake when the world sleeps. They miss meals. They manage sleep like scientists. They master their own minds. They are the quiet guardians of the night sky. So the next time you doze off at 35,000 feet, remember, someone up front is wide awake, keeping watch, scanning screens, sipping coffee, flying us safely across the world. Not just with skill, but with strength, science, and discipline.